Now it's been three years since we have created our first game project, which is an endless runner. So this is the second most watched video in my channel. That's why I decided to remake the project, but we are going to use the new feature of Unity because we are in 2023. And here's the final result. We have this 3D character that we're gonna download from mixamo.com. And as you can see, we can control it by swiping on the screen. Also, we have these gems to pick them up. We can move it. And we have the jump ability. Also, we have the game over screen so that we can replay. And we can go to the menu in which we can select different characters. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. So if you don't know what is Unity, it's a game engine that allows you to create your own games, whether it's 3D or 2D. First of all, you need to install it from this link. I've already created a video that explains how to do that. The link will be under the video description. Then you can open up Unity Hub, which is the tool that is used to create the project. Next, we can hit new project to create a new one. We have different options like 2D, 3D. I highly recommend you to use 3D with URP or Universal Render Pipeline to make the graphics much better. Once you pick it up, we can give it a name like Best Endless Runner. Then we can select the location. And that's all what you have to do. Now we can hit Create Project and Unity will set up everything. I want to mention that this is going to be a beginner tutorial. And if you are intermediate, you could follow along. Now I want to explain the interface and how to use it. Basically, we have different sections, like the scene, which is like the world of our game that we're going to control and put things inside it. By rotating the middle mouse, we can zoom in and out. And if you press it and move your mouse, you can pan around. And finally, by clicking the right mouse button, we can look around in the same position. Most of the time, we're going to use these controls. Let's review it again. By rotating the middle mouse, we can zoom in and out. If we press it, we can pan around and move inside the scene. But if you hold the right mouse button, we can rotate the view and see the world. Next to the scene, we have the game view, which is our game screen. Whenever we play the game, this is how it's gonna look like. But the game that we are making is a portrait mode game. That's why we need to change the layout of this interface. To do that, we can go to the right corner. For now, we have the default layout. I'm gonna select it 2 by 3 but don't worry, we still have the same sections, like the game view, the scene, and so on. After that, I want to move the game view behind the scene. Then we can go to this edge, and by pressing the left mouse button, we can move it like this and change the size. And there you go, our game view looks like a mobile phone in portrait mode. Next, we have the hierarchy, which contains all of the elements that are inside the scene. On top, we have the main camera that shows everything in front of it. If you select it, you can see the game view from the side. Also, we have a directional light so that we can change the lighting of the game. And finally, we have this object that is called the global volume, which makes the game better by applying some effects that we're gonna talk about later on. Next, I want to talk about the inspector, which is on the right side. Whenever you select one of these objects, like the main camera, you will see some properties that are related to the main camera. For example, we can change the background color of our game under environment. The background type is set to skybox. We can change it to a solid color, like a blue color that we can select from this color wheel. I like this one. The same thing applies for the other objects, like the directional light to adjust the lighting. You can make your game a little bit brighter by changing the intensity. You don't have to understand all of this information. The only thing that you have to remember is whenever you select an object from the hierarchy or the scene, you will get all of its properties under the inspector. And finally, we have the assets, in which we're gonna put some assets for our game, like the 3D character, or the images for the buttons. Also, we're gonna add the sound effects under the assets. Now I think you have a good idea about Unity interface. Before I finish this video, make sure to save your project by going to File and hit Save. Also, you have to go to File and Save Project. Then you can close it using this button. So I think that's all for this video. If you have any question or comment about this video, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.